For this task, you will need your A4 paper. And you will also need a sharp pencil to get all the details in. Just remember to sharpen throughout. I've got my sharpener handy, have yours next to you. I hope yours is as fun as mine. Make sure you try and have a rubber handy if you have one. Um, if you do have an old rubber, you can cut it up so that there are sharp corners and that will help you get the fine details in. Um, you could also just use a rubber on top of a pencil. I use that later on as well. Um, the other thing for blending is if you have a cotton bud, that is really handy. If you don't, don't worry. Try not to use your fingers though, um, as the oils from our skin can sometimes make the drawing go a little bit funny. And we're ready to start. Start by drawing a circle on your page. If it's an oval or a teardrop shape instead of a circle, that's absolutely fine. Because if you think about it, water droplets can take any shape really. They're not always perfect circles. So you could draw like a little kind of bean shape like I've drawn there, or you could draw a circle or an oval. So sketch that out first. Now we're going to draw the highlight. Please keep it curved because it wants to, you want it to go with the shape of the droplet. That makes it look realistic. If it's straight, it won't look like it's going with the curve of the 3G object. Then we shade really, really dark next to the highlight. So on the left hand side, you want to shade really, really dark. And as you move towards the highlight and down through the water droplet, you're going to start fading it out. Now what you might notice is I'm actually shading with the curve of the droplet. So as I'm starting to fade my pressure on the pencil, I'm getting lighter and lighter as I move towards the bottom. I'm doing it in slight angles so that it still goes roughly with the curve of the droplet. If you don't understand what I mean, you'll maybe see in a second. So I'm not just going straight up and down or in any direction, I'm going with the direction of the curve of the droplet. And you're gonna get lighter and lighter and lighter towards the bottom. This is where it's good to get that blender in and start to just smooth out the texture. Because if you think about it, the texture of a droplet is smooth and glassy. It doesn't have pencil marks and it's not scratchy looking. So we're trying to get it as smooth as possible here. Uh, you can work back in with your rubber just to get that highlight back if you've blended too much. If you don't have a cotton bud and you don't have any sort of equivalent, you could use a rolled up tissue to try that instead. So if our light source is up, up above the water droplet, then the light will be reflecting onto that little highlight and it will also be casting a shadow down the bottom. So the darkness goes next to the highlight, it fades away to the bottom and then the shadow goes at the very bottom, opposite the highlight. And you want to start the shadow really, really, really dark and very sharp planes to contrast and make the bottom of the droplet look very round but you want to fade it out almost immediately, really, really quickly. You're not gonna spread the shadow too far. It's just gonna be a bit of a, a crescent shape and it's gonna fade out really quickly. The shadow is probably the thing that makes your water droplet look the, look the most realistic, so you want to get this right. And we're nearly done. So we would like you to do as many water droplets in different shapes all over the page, as many as you can. Um, and that's going to be the first page of your submission.
fold your paper in half because we're going to do two textures on this page. We're going to do hair and we're going to do wood on the other side. Start by just drawing some basic strands of hair going in any direction. You can pretend it's like half of someone's head, you can pretend it's the back of someone's head, it really doesn't matter. What we're looking for is some an abstract piece of hair here that we can add texture to. Okay next you're going to add your medium tones so a bit more pressure here and a bit of shading but try to still make it feel and look as if it is real strands of hair. So a medium texture and this is going to be almost our kind of basic layer of tone. You're then going to blend it. Remember if you don't have a, a blending tip you can use a tissue. Um, so this is to give us a bit of depth, this is to give us a backbone on which we can apply deeper and lighter shades. So this is your very much your middle, middle tone. You can leave some of the wee wispy bits on the side um, before you start to add your dark tones. So this next step is, as you can see, the really super dark, dark tones. And just do it really, really abstract. We're going to be blending these as well, so don't panic. All over, try to go with the direction of the hair that you've drawn. Okay, now grab your rubber, even if you've only got a tiny little tip of one on the top of the pencil, like I do. Um, and you're going to add in your highlights. So this is the last step and we are picking out the bits of hair that are basically reflecting the light here. Again, try to work in kind of strands rather than big blocks and this is you adding some movement. Then if you feel it needs to add some flyaway strands on top back with your pencil. If you've rubbed away too much, sometimes this can be a good option just to make it look realistic. First step is to draw the knot of the wood roughly where the shape's going to be and then all your stripes go around it. Okay, you're now going to add all of these bits of grain. So remember wood texture is really, really rough and rugged. So you want to vary the pressure of that pencil. And I'm kind of just inventing this here. We start with the basic shape of the knot and then above and below, you can put lots and lots of different lines. Um, with a very, very pressure on your pencil to try and make it look like some of them are really deep and some of them aren't so deep. So imagine running your fingers over these grains, they would feel like they had ridges in them. And then we're going to add some detail to the knot of wood, wherever that is on your page. You can choose to have yours at the top, I've got mine at the bottom. So add kind of, again, varied patchy bits of texture and tone just as I've done here. Remember knots in wood have rings that go in a circular motion around. So I'm going to draw these really lightly and then later on you'll see me add lots and lots more depth to them. Make sure the ridges and the rings on your knot of wood look like they almost are 3D, so put shadow on one side of them and put a sharp line on the other side and that creates the illusion of ridges. 